Hey fellow Spartans, it's your friend Monocle Mayhem, the entirely blue Spartan. Now before we begin, I need to speak with all of you. You see, I am a simple man. I think. And despite the recent surge in subscribers, thank you very much, I'm cool, I'm nice, I'm not crazy, please don't leave. I still have little reach in comparison to the larger YouTubers like Late Night Gaming, Hidden Xperia, and my hero, the Act Man. Notice me, senpai. Unless there's someone at 343 that's scouring the internet for fan input, I have a smaller chance of getting these ideas out there. So whether you're a subscriber, or sticking around for this one video, I encourage you to share this and any other Halo Infinite idea related videos around so people can see. I'll also link some other YouTubers that have content such as this in the description. I think you should check them out and share their videos around too. I'm humble enough to consider that perhaps most or maybe all of my ideas aren't good, but I think if 343 hears all our ideas that we might have at least one idea that's worth consideration. Hell, maybe even the larger YouTubers have just one idea that 343 is interested in. The point is, we need to get as much of our ideas out there as possible, so every good idea is seen. Whether you're in my position, or way higher up, or you're just a viewer, we need to be heard. And we have been, but there's still more potential for Halo Infinite that needs to be realized. Classic Playlist Integration and Asset Modification In my last video, I brought up the possibility of adding a whole new set of classic playlists to the multiplayer. I'm pretty sure most people have touched on this, besides the whole return to classic gameplay or the franchise's doomed approach. I decided to expand on this. What if we have two sets of multiplayer playlists? Each have social and competitive modes, but there are certain changes that classic playlists have to make classic gameplay work. The problem with classic gameplay in Halo 5 is that the whole game was designed with Spartan abilities in mind. So maps and weapons played and felt kind of weird when you strip away abilities. The Halo 3 playlist is fun and all, but when you play it for longer than 30 minutes, you begin to notice all the quirks the gameplay has. Weapons have tighter accuracy, there's stronger bullet magnetism, all to compensate because everyone is running and zipping around. But if you just slap this type of gameplay into Halo 3 or Reach, hitting your target would be a lot harder due to the speed that Spartan abilities introduce. Plus, the Halo 3 map remakes were made specifically for that playlist. The classic gameplay won't work for the regular maps in Halo 5. So, what Halo Infinite could do is have developer and Forge made maps, designed specifically for each style of gameplay. This is just an example, but let's say the multiplayer launched with 20 maps, 16 are regular sized ones, and 4 are big team battle maps. Half of the regular maps are designed for the new gameplay, and the other half are designed for the old. And the four big team battle maps are compatible with both. In the new playlist, the big team battle maps have tanks, warthogs, aerial vehicles, and whatnot. While classic playlists have some extra cover and scout vehicles, like ghosts, mongeese, along with the rest of the vehicles. But what about the weapons and bullet magnetism? Oh, I know what the ladies like. Well, what if 343 gave us the ability to modify assets like weapons, grenades, and turrets? for individual weapons on the map, and the weapons you spawn with. In the game mode settings, you can modify the way your weapons behave. You could set the number of rounds in a clip, bullet magnetism, fire rate, toggle full or semi-auto fire, bullet spread, bullet drop, custom reticles, toggle the ability to scope, scope level of magnification, and secondary zooms like a sniper, reticles with or without bloom, weapon damage, maybe even set the exact number of shots it takes to kill and headshot damage increases. You could make it so that this is how the weapons you spawn with work, and you can go into forge mode and place weapons that individually work a certain way. This could allow you to create an assault rifle that feels like the one from Halo CE or Halo 3, or a battle rifle that has full auto fire. Not only could 343 set the weapons to function better for classic and new gameplay, but it could open up brand new possibilities for the custom games community. Imagine an infection game mode where all the zombies spawn with snipers and can't zoom in, have 60 round clips and terrible accuracy, and they have to hunt down the one human before the time runs out. This has limitless potential applications. Now some might say this might be difficult to implement. Well that's the thing, developers, <coughs> good developers. Oh. 
do things because they will make the game good, not because it's easy. I mean, what's 343 doing? Just sitting around picking lint out of their balls? You guys want innovation? I just propose the custom games of the future. I'm not saying that if 343 doesn't do this that they're incompetent, but if you make a game that has groundbreaking changes that actually make the game better and makes it stand out from your competition, well then that's well worth the extra hassle. Refined Abilities Regardless of whether or not 343 adds classic playlists, the gameplay should be refined to be more inviting to the old fans and not take the gameplay too far away from the Halo formula. Spartan abilities should be less like abilities and more like tools. So I think if we get rid of everything else and keep thrusters, clamber, slide, sprint, and made adjustments to them to be less intrusive, then I think we'll be good. The thrusters should be like Evade from Halo Reach. All this new tech stuff just feels pretty lame, like the Spartans are defined by technology and not by advanced training. Not only that, but in terms of gameplay, it just feels pretty cheap, so I think it needs to be nerfed. Ideally, I think all the abilities don't need to be in the game. I'm just coming up with ideas that keep new fans happy, that think all this flippy dippy shit is cool, but also trying to make it less annoying to older fans. A middle ground. So if we cut the distance in half, make it less like a thrust and more like a roll, disable using weapons and make it so that you can only use it every 15 seconds, this makes it so it can be used more strategically rather than being abused. Now, Clamber is the one that is the trickiest, but I think that if we made it so that if the ledge is within a certain radius of your reticle, that only then can you Clamber. Fix it so that Clamber only works when you're close to the edge and it doesn't teleport you to it. In Halo 5, the Clamber functions a certain way, I'll link a video that explains it, but just nerf clamber so you have to be a lot more precise. Also, make any ledges that you encounter equally accessible through crouch jumping and clamber. The idea is to make clamber somewhat equal with crouch jumping. Crouch jumping is superior. A player skilled enough can reach any ledge, no matter what way they're facing, and keep using their weapon. Just make clamber a noob's crouch jump. Fool new players into thinking that this new Halo game is modern. Yeah, a feature that gets you to places that temporarily handicaps you. How's that for modern? My ass is modern. This is just me being generous. We seriously don't need clamber. Now, the most controversial topic, Sprint. <laughs> Let me make this very clear. I don't care about Sprint. Who said that? Who the fuck said that? Who's the slimy little communist shit twinkle toad cocksucker down here who just signed his own death warrant? I don't hate it. In fact, I think Halo Reach so far has done it best. But as a base trait, it just breaks the game. 343 made a worthy attempt to buff it so people might like it more, but it still messes with the game. But I'm thinking, what if we scale down the speed of Sprint to half its current speed, make it so that you can only use it once per spawn, and it lasts only 5 seconds. This could turn Sprint into a tool rather than an ability. A tool that you must use wisely. You can use it to rush for a power weapon, or to any objective really. It just might add a new layer of strategy depending on the situation. Do you use your precious speed boost to get to cover ASAP, or make a dash for the flag? If Sprint is something that's used sparingly, then maps won't have to be stretched to be larger than they normally would. Yeah, I get it, not everyone loves Sprint, but the goal is to make these abilities less damaging to the core gameplay. Or just get rid of it. Now an argument for Sprint I've seen a lot that, oh, it's just so stupid that I feel gross for even trying to debunk it. But we're super soldiers, what kind of soldier can't run? Guys. Guys. Halo is a fucking video game. Certain conceits have to be made to make video games challenging, skillful, playable. If the lack of a speed boost that forces you to hold your weapon down bothers you, then how have video games not given you an aneurysm? You ignore walking over a health pack and magically being rejuvenated? Being shot 50 billion times throughout the game with your armor looking fine by the end? Getting your booty clapped by the goddamn sniper jackals in Halo 2 yet magically coming back to life? There's a crap ton of logic defying things in games, yet this does it for you? But that's if Spartans just couldn't run. People make this argument as if the Spartans are just walking everywhere. 
Mm-hmm. Looks like a lazy cocksucker to me. In all seriousness, no. The Spartans are clearly running. You wouldn't last five minutes going at the pace they're going at. So in conclusion, the Spartans are always running, not walking. And sure, they probably can go faster, but this is a game. Look, if you like sprint, that's fine. Just be honest about it rather than making an argument that ditches common sense. Gameplay has always followed lore in a very limited capacity. I'm pretty sure that time I teabagged the Prophet's body in Halo 3 isn't canon, and neither is not running at full speed. But we're talking about multiplayer, the part of the game that has the least to do with storytelling and actually functions like a game, with rules, penalties, and whatever. The campaign can have sprint, and so can certain game modes, but mainly in competitive modes, sprint needs to be toned down or ditched. Well, that's enough mayhem for today. Share this video and any other Halo Infinite related videos you see from me and others. Like if you enjoyed, and subscribe, because daddy loves you. Goodbye.